I cannot imagine a Christmas going by without having the children's Christmas pageant. Last night they had a wonderful uh, presentation uh, telling the story of the birth of Jesus Christ, the most important birthday of the year. We have a Christmas pageant because that's what we're supposed to do. As Christians, we are supposed to pass the story of Jesus down from generation to generation to generation. And the best way to do that is start with our smallest children. And that we did last night, and it was absolutely wonderful. My thank yous go out to the uh, Christian Education Department, to Gay Markham, to the directors, and all of the participants uh, who made this play uh, as wonderful as it was. Well, after the Christmas play was over, Ginger and I were all excited and wound up and everything, so we couldn't sleep. And, and I had this movie at home that uh, we had gotten from Netflix, and you know you get to keep them as long as you want to. We kept this one so long, I forgot what it was. But um, anyway, we, we were too wound up to sleep, so we put the movie in. It was a movie called uh, Post Grad. And uh, I would highly recommend that to anybody that uh, has a child going into college pretty soon. It was about a little girl. And at 11 years old, it dawned on her what she wanted to do with her life. She loved reading books. Nothing else gave her the joy that reading books did. So she decided at the early age of 11 that she was going to be an editor of books. She wanted to read books and manuscripts from all over the world and make that decision as to whether or not this book would be a good story to tell. And it would be a good book that would really make the printing company and the publishing company a lot of money. So later on, as she developed, before she got to college, she had decided that she wanted to work for this one particular publishing company in California. And she had friends there who made recommendations. Uh, she had internships. She was all prepared. She went to college. She did really, really well. And she got a degree in English. And she was the perfect person for this position. So she gets so excited about working for this publishing company after she graduates, and she's so sure that she's going to get the job that she finds the perfect apartment and puts down a $3,500 deposit even before she gets the job. Now, her boyfriend was a boyfriend of reason. He said, now, wait a minute. You hadn't even got the job yet, and you're putting down a $3,500 deposit. Don't you think you ought to wait till you sign the dotted line? I know I'm going to get that job. I'm not worried. It's what I am destined to have and to be. So she goes to the publishing company, and she walks in the front door, and she says, I'm so-and-so, and I'm here to interview for the position of, of uh, junior editor. The lady hands her a clipboard and says, go over there with the rest of the people. She turns around, and there's about 35 other people sitting there filling out an application. She's the last one interviewed. She's in there, and she says, hi, I'm so-and-so and so-and-so. And I even knew at 11 years old that I was going to be a wonderful editor. And I know I'm supposed to be here at this company and... To have this job, the woman said, thank you for coming in, we'll call you. <laughs> no call ever came. She was devastated. She was devastated. She had made that deposit. Her life was turned upside down. She even went to the apartment guy who took the $3,500 deposit, which was non-refundable. And she said, look, I'm a college graduate. She said, he said, that's wonderful, and shut the door. You know, um, I think I was supposed to see that movie last night. Because it, not because it only gave me a sermon, but because 
It has everything in the world to do with us as human beings and with Mary. It has been said over and over again that if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Because life doesn't always unfold the way we expect. And think about what happened to Mary. The angel of the Lord comes to her and she's at least 12 years old, maybe 13 or 14 years old. And she's engaged to Joseph. And she's got her plans all set. She's got her idea of a home figured out. Her husband-to-be is a carpenter, so he can make her any kind of furniture that she wants. And so she has her life totally and completely planned. And I think a lot of people, when they get married, want to have some time together before they have their first child. Maybe take a trip somewhere or get used to each other or just have some time before they have their first child. And I'm sure Mary wanted a little time to, to get her house set up and, and to get used to be married uh, to Joseph and, and, you know, just getting things set the way she wanted to. But Angel Gabriel comes to Mary at the early age of 12, 13, 14, and says, guess what? You're going to have the Son of God as a child. And you're going to name him Jesus. Can you imagine how she felt when she found out, without a choice of her own, that she was going to bear the Messiah that the Jews and the world had been waiting for for years? She was shocked. Now Mary was young, John, but she was not stupid. She said, how can this be? In order for B to happen, A has to happen. And I don't want to go into any details. <laughs> but she told the angel, she said, I appreciate you telling me about B, but there hadn't been an A. How can this be? I want to see y'all explaining this to your kids on the way home. <laughs> Mine's already grown and gone, so I think he knows his ABCs. But anyway, uh, Mary was devastated. But the angel reminded Mary that with God, all things are possible. And so how did Mary react? After she got over the shock, she was a dedicated Believer, she was a wonderful follower of God and the law. And so she responded as she was supposed to. She said, since you have found favor with me, and she's talking about God, I will do as you ask. And so she had the baby Jesus, and we know the rest of the story. Well, today I want us to leave here with some good news. And the good news is this. When you look in the mirror this afternoon, I want you to see an image of Mary because that's what you all are. By his power, God has called each one of you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Each one of you has found favor with God. You are special to Him. And He has drawn you into His plan of salvation. And each and every one of you has your own special calling to take the light of the world, Jesus Christ, wherever you work, wherever you play, and wherever you live. And you know what? Mary did not have a choice. The angel did not say, Mary, would you consider having the Messiah as a child? Would you consider this? That's not what the angel said. The angel said, you will bear a son, and that son will be named Jesus. 
Mary didn't even have the opportunity to name her first child. God had already done that. And I'm telling you from personal experience, when God wants us to do something, Lee, you will do it. It will happen. We have been drawn here today by the magnetism of the Holy Spirit. You have found favor with God. You have been called by God. And I don't know what that calling might be. But I want you to know this. You will do what you have been called to do. I um, tried my best not to be a pastor. I applied for every kind of job you could think of, Walt. Nobody in their right mind, you know that, Lee, you got a son-in-law who's a preacher. Nobody in their right mind would want to do what I'm doing. It's crazy. I said, God, can't I serve in another way? Can I do something else? I believe in my heart that I am exactly where I'm supposed to be at this particular time in history. People have said, Ron, you're not the preacher type. And I said, I know that. I've told God that a thousand times. And when you introduce me to your friends, they say, he's a preacher? <laughs> I've heard them say that. I'm not the preacher type. But here I am at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Marietta, Georgia, standing in front of 5,000 people Preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. Do I exaggerate sometimes? A little bit. But you're my best 250 people in the world. But anyway, we are drawn into our calling. You are disciples of Christ. Each and every one of you has found favor with God. You are special. And you have an assignment. And what we need to pray for right now is clarity that we would have the eyes of Jesus to be able to see exactly how each day we can live out our calling to be the light of the world and let the world know that Jesus, the baby born in Bethlehem, is our Savior. Amen. Let us stand.